Stabilize! Thank 
Thank you for com- Luck can swing the results of a single game, but it's bound to run out sooner or later. Charlotte? Who's your friend and what are they chatting about? Be pleased with the cherry on top, Charlotte! Journalist extraordinaire! Please tell me you're joking! I read that a gang of criminals tricked the Gardamex by disguising themselves as blubber beasts. It's true, isn't it? It has to be! I've invested all my savings into Graph Adversarial Technology and even taken out a sizable bank loan. I'm begging you, begging you like the beggiest beggar in all of Begdom. I need you to calm down a little, Miss Lapine, Pauline. I admire your passion for your research, and I don't mean to dash your hopes for those, um, big ticket orders. But I'm afraid I'm not joking. The Blubber Beast incident was a short story mailed to us by an anonymous amateur author, written in the style of a true story. Hmm. It sounds like they're just discussing a story, but why does this Miss Lapine Pauline seem so distressed? Funnily enough, I actually remember being in a meeting where the editing team was debating the potential risk of misleading the public with this story. They even went to Maison Guardianage for advice. But to our surprise, they fully supported us printing it. They figured that the false intel would be a great way to dupe potential criminals into wearing ridiculous costumes when breaking the law. In truth, Gardamex are extremely sophisticated in their capabilities. They can identify criminals just as reliably as the best human guards, so a crude disguise isn't going to get you far. If anything, it'll just make you stand out all the more. Since we ran that story, the Maison Guardianage has made a slew of arrests, including, uh, one phantom blubber beast, a titanic red crown finch, and a specter man. So I knew this story had helped out law enforcement, but this is the first time I'm learning of an innocent citizen being deceived by it, and investing so much more of for nothing. <laughs> Uh-oh. She really sounds like she's in pain. Um, Pina thinks we should just ask Charlotte what's going on. Hey, Charlotte! Traveler! Paimon! It's you! I was in the area taking some photos for a story when I got to talking to Miss Lapine Pauline about her research. 
She read an article in the Steambird about a criminal who evaded Gardamek detection by disguising themselves as a blubber beast. Inspired by this story, she spent a lot of more researching counter-criminal image recognition technology. Her aim was to improve Fontaine's public security by developing a device that could enhance Gardamek's target recognition capabilities. She was hoping I could write an article to spread awareness about image recognition technology. She even paid me for the article and gave me one of her prototype devices before I could get a word in. But unfortunately, it was just a fictional story, and her efforts and aspirations were all in vain. I tried to let her down gently, but she's finding it all very hard to accept. This is a new situation for us, too! It's such a pity. It seems like the author was only trying to make the story interesting, and the Maison Guardianage only had Fontaine's best interest in mind. Wait! Miss Lapine Pauline! What are you doing? I'm gonna pick a fight with a Gardamek, head to the Opera Epicles, and get a one-way ticket to the Fortress of Meropede. That way, I won't have to repay my debts. It's the only way I can afford to keep on living. Whoa! There's no need to go that far. I mean, come on. Look at you. You wouldn't even dent the Gardamex armor. In all likelihood, they'd only hold you up at the Maison Guardianage for a few days before letting you out, and then you'd still have to repay your debts. Actually, instead of going into the technicalities of that, how much did you actually invest? How bad can it really be? <laughs> 270,000 Mora. Okay, well, escaping to the Fortress of Meripede over a sum like that seems like a last resort. Surely there must be other options. Not anymore. I used to be an equipment supplier to the Fontaine Research Institute before that blew to pieces, and now I'm just a small-time engineer. I scraped together some savings over the past few years, but I put every last Mora into this project, and now I'm left with nothing. It's not just my savings that are gone, it's my whole future as a graph adversarial technology specialist and my dreams of becoming a billionaire one day. <laughs> My life is over! Don't despair, Miss Lapine Pauline. I think I know a way for you to turn this around. This prototype you've given me, the camera lens for image recognition sample collection. It's really quite something. You said you designed it specifically for high fidelity image capture and analysis, yes? The rapid focal length adjustment is a very useful function in its own right. It's sure to make many journalists' jobs much easier. In fact, I'd say it has the potential to revolutionize Fontaine's news media. So your research efforts thus far are by no means in vain. The technology you've developed may have many applications that you've never even considered. R really? Absolutely. I've been working as a journalist for the Steambird for a long time now. No one understands the issues we journalists face on a day-to-day -day basis better than me. So keep calm, take heart, and start thinking about mass production. In the meantime, I'll show your invention to all my colleagues to drum up interest in your product. I can't believe it! If this is true, then I can look into setting up a whole camera lens development pipeline! My big ticket orders and billionaire aspirations are still in the cards! Oh, maybe I should consider taking out another loan. That way, I can rapidly improve the lens production process, be the first to market, and prepare to battle for dominance in the camera industry! Come on! Stop daydreaming about your pipelines for a minute! Just take it one step at a time and see how it goes! There's no sense in putting all your eggs in one basket before things are even off the ground! Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I can probably speak to some people I know and license my image recognition device to a workshop to raise some funds! I can't believe I didn't think of this sooner! There's no time to lose! I need to get to work! Early bird gets the worm! Uh, can you believe her? She just ran off! Paimon's pretty sure our vice went in one ear and out the other. It's understandable. When inspiration and passion strike at the same time, it's all too easy to throw yourself headfirst into your work and forget about everyone around you. A lot of journalists are the same way when they're first starting out. But don't you worry. 
I'm gonna write an article on all this and I'll be checking in on her regularly. Her research has the potential to benefit the entire journalistic community. I'll give her plenty of input to stop her from going down any rabbit holes and make sure mass production of her lens can begin as soon as possible. It's reassuring to know that you'll be looking out for her, Charlotte. Actually, you know what? Why don't you two take this prototype lens? I'm sure you'll have plenty of chances to use it on your travels. It takes the right person to get the most out of a new technology. In your hands, it's sure to capture some amazing sights. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. What a nice surprise. We were just curious about what you guys were talking about. Totally didn't expect to get a free gift out of it. You're welcome. I got something out of this, too. The beginnings of a very interesting news story. The boundaries between real news reports and news like fiction must not be blurred, even when there's a compelling justification for doing so. Yes, that's how I'll phrase it to the editors when I give them my feedback. Let's hope we don't mislead any more well-meaning citizens in the future. It's been a while since we last saw Nervlet. Paimon wonders what he's been up to. Paimon has so many questions about his true identity. Let's go talk to him and find out. Let's go get ourselves some answers. Prepare to move out. Perhaps we could take a walk by a riverbank or somewhere similarly fluvial.
Show them. Emerge. Right here. Opportunities to bask in the sunlight like this are few and far between. Right now, right here, right now. Charge! Kamisato up. Sweet. Who wants some of this? Atta boy! Can't catch me. Let's roll! Advance! Emerge! Be still! Right here, right now! Charge! Attaboy!
There's still a long road ahead. Most humans are <laughs> of their fleeting lives chronic
strength, huh? I thought it was all rumors, but now here I am, experiencing it for myself. Hmm. Huh? Ah. Ah. Mm-hmm. Sato Suyu. Right here, right now. Oh, you coming through! Run from dead. Can't catch me. Right now, right here. Press the advantage! Advance! Cascade! Emerge, right now. Emerge. Nothing lasts forever. Show them, right now. Bam!
Ah, you're here. Paima never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paima will remind her for sure. Paima meant it all. Risley, you got what Paima meant, right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. Hey, not you too! Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns. Which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. Please, go ahead. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. I was an orphan, adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Once we were older, Mom and Dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means, and go on to adopt more young children. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. And then? And then, I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. All children that were sold would leave the house, and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against our parents' adoring smiles. Yes, like the society, my parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all. But I did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. Ah. My methods were extreme. Yes, but I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most, and I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. It's all right. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Oh, it's a Vizim Fasol! Are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. We came here on impulse today, because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please, go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. Within reason, of course. It's... <clears throat> I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. You're getting married? Yeah, we met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners, and 
We also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make the arrangements. If you need anything special shipped in from the surface, just say the word. Oh, we can't thank you enough, Your Grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Yeah, we've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, Your Grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, loosen up a bit! Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevat to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey. <laughs> Did I hear that right? Monsieur Nirvalet, are you sure you'd like to take over the case yourself? That's right. No, but why? Technically speaking, cases like this are better left to the guards. Nirvalet! Sadine! Hey there! What are you two talking about? Ugh, Traveler and Paimon, please help me talk our Chief Justice out of this. He wants to investigate a case on his own. No, this is completely unprecedented. How can we have the Udex acting like a private detective? Hmm? Thank you for your concern, but I currently have no such plans. Oh, apologies. I took your question in earnest, but it now occurs to me that it was most likely in jest. So, what is it exactly? It sure sounds serious if it's something you've got to investigate personally. A Melusine named Kiara received a threat letter. And then? That is all the information I have acquired at this stage. Huh? Uh, I have no idea why you're so hung up over this. I've checked the schedule in advance and it seems like there aren't any trials today. So, if you insist, I have no objections. Thank you for understanding. Then I shall return to my post for now. Should anyone visit while you are away, I will be sure to make a record of it. I sincerely hope that you will return soon. Judging from Sadine's reaction, it must be pretty rare for you to investigate stuff personally. What's so special about this case? I cannot tell you just yet. But it reminded me of certain past events. There could be complicated conflicts of interest behind all this, so I must eliminate all risks in advance. Come on! Stop being so secretive! We still have no idea what's going on! It is not my intention to keep you in the dark, but I need some time to revisit those memories and collect my thoughts. Long story short, a little more than 400 years ago, I became the Udex of Fontaine and initiated a series of institutional reforms. There were few people I could trust, 
but I had two subordinates who were exceptionally trustworthy and capable. Carol, a Melusine, and Vautrin, leader of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. They must have been amazing people to receive such high praise from you! Indeed. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to protect them. The reforms damaged the interests of some, and the more conservative faction took advantage of Carol's identity to instigate political unrest. Ultimately, they wanted me to yield more of my power. The incident resulted in Carol taking her own life and Vautrin being exiled. From then on, I've been especially careful when dealing with cases related to Melusines. All Melusines used to live a secluded life away from human society. I granted their wishes when some of them, including Carol, asked me to bring them to the court of Fontaine. Many common folk believe that I share a special bond with the Melusines, and whatever they do can be traced back to me. Some of them, especially those who hold a grudge against me, exploit that belief and stir up conflict over Melusines in an attempt to lay the blame on me. I have nothing against the opinions of others, but the moment a whirlpool of conspiracy forms, it inevitably affects the innocent. It has already happened once, and I want to make sure it does not happen again. Um, even so, why do you have to be the one investigating? There's the guards, the Mari Chausse Phantom, and the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Aren't they more than enough to figure out what's going on? Based on prior experience, there is a high chance that those who hold hostility towards me do not belong to the same department. The political system of Fontaine is relatively complex and involves the interests of multiple different factions. However, since I am technically an outsider in Fontaine, a lot of trouble could be avoided if I personally took on the case. Outsider? But aren't you the Chief Justice of Fontaine? Why would you be an outsider? I understand where you are coming from, but there is not necessarily a connection between my responsibilities and how I perceive myself. You know very well about my true identity, and have even met others of my kind in other nations. Even though I was born with a human form, there is a fundamental difference between dragons and humans. Taking on the role of Chief Justice does not make me a part of this community. In fact, the status I was granted has prevented me from forming deeper bonds with others. I have lived in Fontaine for a long time, but I do not belong here. That is why I call myself an outsider, a fish out of water. Yeah, we have nothing to do with all those organizations anyway, so how about we come with you on your investigation? Let's team up and round up all the bad guys lurking in the dark. Hmm, that does not sound like a bad idea. I rarely investigate cases on my own, but with professionals like you around, I'm sure it will go a lot smoother. Oh, Vaimon's starting to get a little embarrassed. Just leave it to us. Let us go. We should visit Kiara first and try to gain a better understanding of the situation. Um, so Nuffalet feels like he doesn't truly belong here in Fontaine, but is that really true? Paimon feels like he has a kind of skewed perspective on a lot of things. Anyway, let's catch up with him first. Paimon's been thinking. You called yourself a fish out of water, right? But since you're the Hydro Dragon, would a dragon out of water suit you better? Thank you for your suggestion. I will consider using the more accurate term in private occasions. Please allow me to rephrase. Has a dragon out of water? Ugh. That sounds kind of weird. Let's stick with the previous version instead.
I never thought I'd see him here. Does anyone have a camera? <sighs> the weather's amazing today. Kiara. Huh? Monsieur Nevelet! And you are? Oh, I remember! You're the traveler and Paimon! I've heard about you. Aw, she's adorable! Hey there, it's nice to meet you! <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Is there anything I can do for you? I heard from Sedine that you received a threatening letter. A threatening letter? Oh, right! I remember now! The letter fell through the crack in my door as I was heading out this morning. It said something about catching me, so I thought someone wanted to play hide-and-seek. But Sedine told me it was a threatening letter, and that I could be in danger. But that's not gonna happen with everyone looking after me, right? Have you run into any suspicious-looking people recently? Suspicious-looking people? What counts as suspicious? Ah! Oh, did you think of something? Nope. I don't remember meeting anyone like that. Do you still have the letter with you? I want you to show me what it says. Now then, <clears throat> get lost. If you don't leave the Mare Chaussee Phantom, I will come and catch you in person. Don't say I didn't warn you. Hmm. A simple threat. Neither the handwriting nor the content itself reveals anything about the writer's intentions. We can't rule out that possibility. Since you can't think of anyone suspicious, I will be heading back to the Palais Memonia to review some official documents. Kiara. You should come with us. It's safer if you stay close by. Sure! Uh, wait, no, no, no. I, I still have a case to work on. I promised Aloff that I'd check on her place later. But you are being watched right now. Going off on your own could be dangerous. And that's where we come in to help. We'll stay with Kiara and make sure she's safe. With that around, anyone scheming to hurt Kiara can forget about it! Thank you, Traveler. Big sis Paimon. Uh... Oh, uh, ahem. Don't worry, your big sis Paimon is super strong. All right, let us go our separate ways for now. Please take care of Kiara. We'll take her to a lost place right away. See you. So, Kiara, how old are you? Porta Fontaine with Carolyn Nuvillette. That must have been a long time ago. Carol? Did Nuvillette mention her just now? That was more than 400 years ago! Why would Paimon be a big sister to you? My memory isn't that good, but Carol told me I could address others based on how I feel about them. Paimon feels a lot more grown up than me, so you're a big sis. Uh, hey, Traveler, did you hear that?
Strange. Paimon felt like someone was following us. Payloff! Kiara, you're here. Huh? Wait, aren't these two... Oh, they're the Traveler and Big Sis Paimon. I thought so. What brings you here? All right. Guess I shouldn't have asked. May I begin inspecting the store as planned? Of course. Go ahead. No hazards detected. You've cleared the inspection. Seems like the criminal from that case last month never set foot in here at all. That was quick. What were you inspecting? I took a look around the shop. Navilet says that us Malazines have special eyes that can see things people can't. Things like blood stains. No matter how hard you try to clean them up, we Malazines can see their residual stains for some time. Pretty cool, huh? All right, all right. Now that you're done inspecting, can we have a chat? Hear me out. I'm planning to release an outfit for children next month and wanted to hire you as my model. Is that okay with you? Of course! Is there anything I need to do? Please wait a moment while I take your measurements. This sample should be a perfect fit. Seems like they get along really well. Huh? What are you looking at? Is there really someone watching us? Shh! Let's sneak over and take a look. Strange? Why isn't he back yet? Gotcha! Charlotte, what are you doing here? Oh, wait, don't tell Paimon you're the one who sent Kiara that threatening letter. But you don't seem like the type to... Threat letter? What threat letter? Uh, this is starting to feel like an interrogation. Okay, I'll be straight with you. I don't know the slightest thing about that threat letter you mentioned. I only wanted to follow Monsieur Nouvellet and request an interview with him. You want to interview him? That's right. I'm not the only one, you know. Interviewing him is every journalist's dream. But it's not an easy task to accomplish. The Palais Mermonia rarely accepts appointment requests from us, and we never have the chance to interrupt when the court's in session. So imagine how surprised I was seeing him out on the streets today. It seemed like you were investigating something, too. The perfect opportunity to whip up an exclusive, don't you think? Of course, I'll make sure to turn in my manuscript to him for review. I have my principles, and I'd never publish an article without the consent of all parties involved. Yeah, we're doing a secret investigation that can't be made public knowledge. I see. Well, if you say so, I guess I'll put this matter aside for now. What a shame. Chances like this don't come by very often, you know. In exchange, could you tell me what the threat letter is about? I swear I won't tell. Alright then. What? Someone's targeting a cute little melazine? Shh, not so loud. It just so happens that I did an interview with Kiara. Last month, in fact. It was well received by our readers, so I was planning to continue the series. And now someone's coming after her? I'll ask my colleagues about it. Who knows? We might find something. And don't worry, I know what I'm doing. This secret's safe with me. But I gotta warn you, even if I keep my lips sealed, others will know eventually. Why? People care a great deal about Monsieur Nouvellet's each and every move. Some may have already realized that something was up. Besides, the case involves melazines, so... Anyway, I'll get going now. Watch yourselves, all right? Well, that was a nice chat. <clears throat> Let's head back 
can check on Kiara. What do you think? The design looks pretty good, huh? I think it's great! Huh. It's very pretty indeed. Coran! What are you doing here? It seems that you just showed up out of nowhere! As I passed by the Palais Mermonia, I heard that Nouvellet was investigating a case with you. Technically speaking, he and I are under an employer-employee relationship. It didn't feel right to have my employer personally take on such trivial cases. I happen to have some time at the moment, and came to take a look. I sometimes have my clothes custom-made at this boutique, in any case, so we always have a lot to talk about. Ah, oh, Nervalet sure is lucky to have someone like you! Leave this to me. You should go meet up with Nervalet. Okay then, we'll leave Kiara in your hands! <sighs> Come on, let's go find Nervalet! Oh, you're back. Is everything all right? We ran into Cloran. She offered to help us protect Kiara. That is good to hear. I trust her abilities. It looks like Kiara is in good hands. We thought so too. Well, did you find any leads? I've been looking over the case records. Specifically, inspection reports submitted by Kiara and major cases I have judged over the past decade. I have come up with two plans. On one hand, I could start with Kiara and track down the group behind all this step by step. On the other, I could also analyze the conflicting interests of these major cases and confirm my suspicions if there is indeed a mysterious group that bears a grudge against me. They both sound like pretty solid plans, but can you really finish browsing through all these documents? That's a lot of reading even for Paimon. Don't worry. I'm a fast reader when it comes to official documents. After all, I have several hundred years of reviewing under my belt. We'll help you read through them. We have nothing else to do. Thank you. I will continue looking through the ones piled up on the desk, but feel free to browse through anything else in this room. Have you made any progress? We skipped through some of them, but there wasn't anything useful. 
Oh, there are so many documents lying around. Just how many cases have you handled? I would love to answer that question, but the truth is I've never made a precise calculation myself. If memory serves me right, there should be at least 100,000 cases. The documents you see are just a small fraction of what's really there. Whoa, that's a lot. Looks like the work of a Chief Justice isn't easy at all. That might be how it seems from another's perspective, but trials and official duties are, to me, simply routine. There are many documents here. Take a break if you are tired. Ah, <sighs> you read Paimon's mind. All right. Let us take a break then. Please pardon my lack of consideration. People rarely come to the Palais Memonia for matters outside of work. To be quite honest, I am not sure what we should do. Would you like to have some drinks, perhaps? You must be thirsty after all that work. what Novelette likes to drink. Oh, maybe he's a fan of really fancy wines. He seems like the type of person who'd own an entire winery. You know, like Diluc. Uh, what's inside these glasses? It looks just like water. An astute observation. It is indeed water. What did you think it was? Um, since you're the Chief Justice and all, Paimon thought you'd prefer something more... sophisticated. This water is indeed very special. It would not be an overstatement to call it sophisticated. Huh? I believe you've already tried Fanta. In fact, there are many other drink factories in Fontaine including those that specialize in packaging pure drinking water. Said water is sourced from all across Tevat, including Mondstadt's Cider Lake, Liyue's Chintsa Village, and Inazuma's Konda Village. Here is one of their latest products, water from Sumeru's Apam Woods. If I were to comment on their mouthfeel, hmm, the waters of Cider Lake warm the heart, the waters of Chintsa Village have a poignant touch, while one might call the waters of Konda Village uh, placid. Distinct differences exist between the waters of each area. You will appreciate their intricacies once you taste them carefully. Really? Let Paimon try! What do you think? How regrettable. It seems like you still have a long way to go in refining your tastes. Hey, this doesn't have to do with refining our tastes. Paimon's pretty sure most ordinary people can't tell the difference. How did you do it anyway? Oh, could it be because you're the Hydro Dragon? Uh, we are allowed to bring that up, right? Since no one else is around? Oh, Paimon's been wanting to ask this for ages. If you're the Hydro Dragon, why would you become Chief Justice in human society? Hmm. Uh, sorry. Paimon was just curious. You don't have to answer. There's nothing to hide. 
I was simply organizing my thoughts. I accepted this position because I wanted to seek out answers to questions that have perplexed me. Questions? Are there really things you can't figure out? Many, in fact. But the one question that puzzles me the most concerns my own existence. In essence, I neither know why I was born in this form, nor do I understand where my long life should take me. For a long time, my memory was rather incomplete. With regard to the Primordial Sea, for example, I used to only be able to vaguely recall its connection to me, but I was unaware of what that connection was exactly. Perhaps the elemental dragons of other nations may have some form of an answer. However, they are scattered across all of Tevat. Abruptly visiting could very well pose an unpredictable risk. True. Some of them have very... unique personalities, too. I have been holding on to these unanswered questions for a long time. But there is one thing I've discovered along the way. My emotions easily resonate with those of others. Even I don't have the slightest idea what they mean. My guess would be that there are at least some similarities between humans and myself. By observing their behavior, perhaps I could one day understand the meaning of my existence. Have you made any progress then? Perhaps, but I find such progress difficult to describe. As an outsider, chances to engage in meaningful interactions with others are few and far between. That's why I'm quite thankful for this chat. Such opportunities are rare. <sighs> Alas, time is limited. We should move on with our investigation. Are we gonna continue reading these documents? Ugh, Hyman's getting dizzy already. I wasn't able to find any leads even after browsing through most of the documents. But while we were on the topic of water a moment ago, another idea came to me. Water? Do you mean... That's right. The Fountain of Lucene is where all of Fontaine's waters converge. It is the vessel of countless memories and emotions. If there really were an organization attempting to use Melusines against me, they should also hold an intense resentment towards me. Perhaps we'll be able to find some new leads by sensing the Hydro Element within the Fountain. Huh. Why didn't Paimon think of that? Come on, let's go take a look! Perhaps we should go. There shouldn't be too many people near the Fountain of Lucene during the evening. I've heard that if you give tavern owners a considerable tip, they'll be willing to share some information on the down low. You mean the angel share? But Master D. Luke seems like a very rich man. How big a tip is considerable anyway? <laughs> Strike a pose! <laughs> 
Let the world fly! <laughs> Let the mighty be humbled! Bow your head! Or... I probably shouldn't disturb them. I wonder what's going on. Looks like we got lucky today. There's hardly anyone around. Uh, what should we do next? Oh, Traveler, can you still hear the voices from the fountain? Perhaps leave the investigation to me. I need you to take a few steps back and keep a safe distance. A safe distance? Nevelette, what exactly are you- Oh, it's glowing! I understand your excitement, but there's no need to thank me. Although I have responded to your wishes, it was not without personal interest. Melusine's special sight make them especially suited for joining the Mare Chaussée Phantom. I'm certain you'll become an indispensable part of Fontaine's detective force. I know, but I'm really glad to be of help. Not only can I repay you for your kindness, but also... It feels like my life has become a lot more meaningful. But a meaningful life also comes with its risks. It's definitely the safest to just stay in the village. 
but I want to see the outside world nonetheless. In truth, I've never really understood the purpose of my existence, or what I'm capable of contributing to this world. For almost 20 years, we've stayed in our village without finding any answers. That's why we wanted to leave our village and look for the meaning of our existence elsewhere. <sighs> I understand your confusion. In fact, I feel the same way. I too came here for an answer to my questions about my own existence. Really? Could you tell us what we should do to fit in as you did? The truth is, many people threw rocks at us today and told us to go back to our village. It hurt a lot when they hit me in the head, and I tried really hard not to cry. Logically speaking, both time and effort are essential when different species attempt to peacefully coexist. It will be a difficult road ahead, with countless obstacles to overcome. Different identities and ways of thinking all contribute to strengthening the barrier between one another. Removing it will be no easy feat. There aren't many suggestions I can share, because just like you, I haven't fully integrated into this society. Despite my social status, I am still an outsider. Oh, I see. Let's all do our best, then. I'm confident that we'll find the meaning of our existence one day. I believe in you, but you shouldn't lose sight of the difficulties ahead. If you run into any trouble, I suggest that you inform Vautran, the captain of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Huh? Is he the person I met in the Palais Marmonia earlier? Yes. Do you have any concerns? That stone-faced human. He didn't even bother to look at me when I tried talking to him. It felt like he wasn't interested in anything but work. He is an earnest man. There will be plenty of opportunities to work together in the future, so please try to get along. No need. Oh. Hello, I'm Carol, a Melazine. Is there anything you need help with? Get away from here. Calm down. I don't mean to cause any harm. Hmm, hard to say. Yeah. We should probably stay away from these monsters. Haven't you realized? Strange incidents have been increasing ever since they came. Why should we trust this? Nervilat allowed them into the court of Fontaine just like that. Exactly. That so-called Chief Justice even granted them official positions. Not only that, but they're now responsible for investigating cases as well. I swear, there's some hidden agenda at play here. Go away! Quit acting innocent! I'm not leaving! I won't let you say bad stuff about him! We joined the Mari Chausei Phantom and solved lots and lots of cases! We've never done anything wrong! Solving cases? With Nervilet in cahoots with you! You could have fabricated it all, and no one would know! So tell me, how can you guarantee that you Melazines aren't involved in anything that occurred recently? Uh, I... Didn't I tell you before? Don't go advertising if you're not a good talker. Votre? Aside from spreading unjustified rumors, if you continue insulting members of the Mare Chausse Phantom, the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol has every right to subject you to interrogation. There have indeed been an increase in cases recently, perhaps due to the shifting currents of conspiracy. And I understand your concern. However, there's been no evidence pointing towards Melazines being involved. <laughs> Even the captain of the security patrol is on their side. 
Nervilet's newly reformed police force is already corrupt to the core. How can two completely different species possibly coexist? You heard that? Yeah. I don't understand. Why won't anyone believe us? There have been rumors saying that you were born from calamity, and that you inherently bring danger to those around you. There are countless negative rumors about you floating around in Fontaine. It's near impossible for you to become a part of this society. Best if you give up before it's too late. Monsieur Nervalette said that we needed to put both time and effort in. I don't know how long it'll take, but I can at least try making my best effort. I still want to try a little harder. Thank you for bailing me out earlier. <sighs> okay, I won't be taking any more of your time. I painted a lot of flyers last night, so I have to stay and hand them out to everyone. Give them to me. You're... You're not gonna take them away, right? We'll hand them out together. The faster we get this done, the sooner we can head back. What's this? Medals of Peace, awarded to you and Vautram. Thank you for your continued dedication in the past five years. You've taken one small step forward in helping Melusines gain the trust of humans. I think I'll pass. Hey, don't say that! We wouldn't have made it this far without you! It won't be long before Melusines begin living peacefully with the humans! Just the thought of it makes me happy. Don't keep your hopes up. We've barely scratched the surface. There's still a long way to go before that dream of yours comes true. Ugh, you blockhead! Don't ruin the mood! Hmm. Botran brings up a good point. The trust humans have placed in you is still very fragile. Any small incident could undermine the hard work you've put in. Please be on your guard for the next few days. Yes, sir. Okay, got it. Medal of Peace? <laughs> peace isn't going to give us back what's rightfully ours. Are you sure we should do this? We're no match for Nervalette, even with all our powers combined. What if... Nah, not gonna happen. As long as he remains in his position, there's no chance he'd take us out personally. There are rules even he must comply with in the political sphere, unless he wants to become an enemy of Fontaine. So quit worrying and just go ahead with it. I've already planned out the murder. Once we lay the blame on the Melazines as the person who brought them to the court of Fontaine, Nervy Lett will be left with no excuse. I guess you're right. Ugh. If he just left things the way they were, it never would have come to this. But he's forced our hand. Time to teach him a lesson. Turn the murderer in! Melazines can't be trusted! That goes for Nervalette, too! Peaceful coexistence? What a joke. Get out of the court of Fontaine and don't ever come back!
The results of the investigation are in, Captain Voltron. Go on. There is no direct evidence, but reasonable inference indicates that the ones controlling the situation are supporters of the old regime, whose interests have been undermined by the reform. They tricked Miss Carroll into going to the crime scene and pressed charges against her. After that, they incited panic among the people in order to make Monsieur Nervillette confess to his mistakes and yield up power. The guards were stopped by the enraged mob and couldn't intervene in time. Miss Carroll chose to sacrifice herself to pacify the situation. And she called me a blockhead. A little investigation would have cleared things up. Why didn't she wait until we'd established the truth? Like that. The situation had rapidly escalated to a physical altercation between infuriated citizens and the guards. Miss Carol might have thought there was no better plan. That is indeed something she'd do. Captain Voltra, should I present these results to Monsieur Nervillet right away? There's no need. Notify the guards to restrict public access to all information. Restrict access to... Wait, are you planning to... <sighs> There's something I've never told, Carol. I had a little sister named Delaria who passed away when I was very young. She's just like Carol in every possible way. Innocent, kind, always believing the best of people. People like her are the most vulnerable to deception and betrayal. From the moment I met Carol, I knew that she'd be easily manipulated by others. I kept a cold demeanor and tried lecturing her into giving up. Looks like she was unfazed by that. <sighs> yes. In fact... Some of her spirit must have rubbed off on me instead. Because I too began working towards that pie-in-the-sky dream of hers. I should have known. Those cowards don't have the guts to confront New Villette. They even avoided causing trouble for me. They were after Carol all along. Can you understand how I feel? Right now, there's only one thought on my mind. Only through bloodshed can their debt be repaid. I understand, but I'm certain Monsieur Nervalet wouldn't accept that as a solution. That's exactly why we need to keep this a secret. Give me the list of suspects. What happens after this has nothing to do with any of you. I will take responsibility for everything. Did you know? They're hearing a major case today, and the criminal is Captain Vautrin of the Special Security and Surveillance Patrol. Apparently, he resorted to personal measures to seek revenge for Carol, and settled the score with the group that framed his friend. <sighs> hey, why aren't you saying anything? I'm thinking... We should try our best to bail him out when the trial commences. Bail him out? Why? Shh, keep it down! Haven't you realized? Both Votran and Carol are Nervilet's most trusted subordinates. After everything that happened to Carol, Nervilet's guaranteed to do everything he can to keep Votran around. Besides, now that the old regime has been uprooted, Nervilet's status is secure as can be. As long as we redirect public opinion, Nervilet will be able to give Votran a reprieve. The benefits are endless. Votran sought vengeance for his friend for a valid cause. This represents the justice he upholds! Please, think about it. If the same thing had happened to you, wouldn't you feel the same way he did? Yeah, that's right! This whole thing started because of those despicable cowards who levied false accusations against Carol. How could Vautrin be declared guilty for seeking revenge? Monsieur Nouvellet. Mr. Vautrin is innocent! He's innocent! innocent. Order! I acknowledge your arguments. 
For Tran, your revenge could be seen as a form of justice. I understand your decision, which is why I cannot help but feel regret and even grief about the judgment I must now impose. Personal justice does not equate to justice as defined by the law. To execute your plan for revenge, you abused your authority and conducted informal executions. Your actions have thus violated the law. Therefore, you will be declared guilty. What? That can't be! Monsieur Nervilet, please give this a little more thought. He has done so much for Fontaine. Votran, my friend. Is there anything else you want to say? Nervilet, what have I done to deserve this? I've closely followed every one of your orders. Can't you see? Everyone in this room believes that I'm innocent. Why can't you just let me off? Is this what justice means to you? Answer me, Nuvillette! Order. Since there have been no further objections, the Oratrice will now deliver the final verdict regarding the charges against Mr. Vautrin. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, Mr. Vautrin will be declared guilty. Goodbye, Monsieur Nuvillette. This all happened because of Carol's naive ideas. How can different species peacefully coexist anyway? Apologies, it seems like my memories got the better of me. I tried my best to suppress the power of Hydro within myself, but it seems like it still caused the emotions within the Fountain of Lucene to boil over. Due to my negligence, the overflow of emotions and memories must have affected you as well. Are you all right? Wow, the Hydro Dragon is more powerful than Paimon thought. Anyways, the last time we came here, the Traveler only heard voices from the Fountain of Lucene. No emotions boiling over or anything. It is as you said. This might be because I am different. It is not only the Fountain. I can sense emotions from all waters in Fontaine. Rivers, lakes, and even the rain. That sounds awesome! But I rarely ever do anything like this. Emotions carried by water are always chaotic and disconnected. As an outsider, having my mind occupied with irrelevant memories isn't exactly a pleasant experience. Which ones? <laughs> it's fine. I prefer not to speak of those memories. That does not mean I am deliberately hiding them. It was a coincidence, but perhaps it is a good thing that you saw everything in that form. You should now understand why I believe there to be a conspiracy behind all this. These two cases are much too similar. I felt like I needed to do something. Uh, Paimon's starting to lose track of what you're saying. Don't leave Paimon out of the conversation! Then let us get back to the point. While I was investigating the fountain, I discovered something strange. I did not sense too much hatred towards me within its accumulated emotions. I don't know what caused this to happen, but it seems like there won't be a shortcut to finding the organization that may be pulling the strings here. However, I did find some resentment directed towards Kiara. If I remember correctly, it seemed to be related to a smuggling case. Didn't we read about that in one of the documents? You've read about it? In that case, the resentment should have come from that incident. Huh? What are you doing here? I was just about to look for you at the Palais Mermonia. Navia! Nice to see you again! Is there something we can help with? I've heard some things. 
But I'm not purposely asking around or anything. Don't worry. Rumors are abroad that someone's scheming against Melusines, and that you're investigating the case. So I told the Spina di Rosula to keep an eye out for leads. We've had unfamiliar faces showing themselves at the Fleur Sandra lately. Maybe you'll find the suspects among them. Thank you. Where did you hear about all this? The Chief Justice out on investigation, accompanied by the Traveler from afar. No matter how you conceal your whereabouts, there will be countless eyes watching you. You talked to Kiara, but didn't ask her to keep things secret. People curious to know asked around for information, then it was only a matter of time before word of the threatening letter spread all across Fontaine. So that's what Charlotte meant. Indeed. I did not expect that this could be kept hidden for too long, but the rumors still spread faster than I imagined. Hmm. You know, it could be because... you attract more attention than you think. Anyway, any progress with the investigation? The suspects who threatened Kiara might have to do with a certain smuggling case, but it is still uncertain if there is in fact another party behind all this. We are planning to return to the Palais Mormonia to revisit some details and identify the senders of that threatening letter. All right, then I'll round up the Spina di Rosula and follow up on their progress. Wait for my word. Ta-ta! Uh, Nevelet, do you think there'll be any problems now that the word is out? I have already considered that possibility, and I do not think that there will be any. As a matter of fact, once the word gets out, no one would dare to harm Kiara in broad daylight. What is more important is how the case is perceived by the public. Four hundred years ago, they chose to side with the old regime and direct their resentment towards the Melusines. I hope the same won't happen again. Let us head back to the Palais. Strange. What are these people doing out on the streets so late at night? Did something happen? Let's take a look around. Have you heard? Someone's plotting against a melazine. This is 100% the truth. Even the Chief Justice is investigating in person. What? That's it! Who's been threatening melazines? Show yourself! Our enemies are lurking in the shadows and won't easily reveal themselves. But no amount of hiding will keep us from finding them. That's exactly what I wanted to say. The guards have already begun to take action. We can't just stand by and watch. Think about how much we owe them. Now that they're in danger, how can we just sit back and do nothing? Everyone, please stay alert to your surroundings from now on. If you see any suspicious persons, report them to the guards immediately. It feels like you've been following me this whole time. Did something happen? We were informed that. <clears throat> nope. We just finished our shifts and happened to be strolling by. Have you had dinner yet? Why don't we check out the new items at the dessert shop together? This isn't a good time to be out and about. Come on. Don't act tough. I bet you're hungry too. <sighs> All right. Let's go buy a cake or something. You shouldn't ever skip meals. Especially if you have another shift scheduled for later. I heard even Nervulet's keeping an eye on the situation. <laughs> this is the perfect chance to get promoted. We gotta make sure we give it all we've got. Seriously? Were you planning to shirk your duties if Nervulet wasn't involved? Relax, I was just playing. We've worked together for years now. If something happened to them, I'd be haunted by regret for the rest of my life. That's more like it. We should stand guard until the criminal has been caught. Come and fight me instead, you cowards! Have you heard? Even the special patrol came to help. Shh, look! Is it that Nervulet? I think he's looking at us. Uh, looks like there's nothing to worry about! Hmm. This is truly wonderful. So, wanna go over and say hi? No, I should stay where I am. My appearance could give rise to unnecessary commotion. Let us stick to our plan and return to the Palais Mormonia. 
The faster we uncover the truth, the better.